So this is, we wanted to take a half an hour here for just an informal uh, town hall, state of the institute kind of summary. And the plan is that I'm going to take 10 minutes just to give you um, an overview. Uh, before I start this, I just want to give my own personal thanks to all the speakers today. I thought those were five tremendous talks uh, covering a huge waterfront of neuroscience, and uh, I'm personally grateful for all of your contributions, and we'll hear more from you in the informal conversation later in the afternoon and evening. So uh, as I alluded to right at the very top of the morning this morning, uh, the Neurosciences Institute thus far in our entire four years of existence have really emphasized three things, people, research, and facilities. Uh, on the people front, we have uh, emphasized faculty, postdocs, and graduate students, and I'll tell you about those in just a moment. Uh, and in the interdisciplinary research initiatives, we really have emphasized three themes, what we call neurodiscovery, which is basic hypothesis, question-driven neuroscience, neuroengineering, which is really about tools development for neuroscience, and then neurohealth, which is about basic and translational research that's actually relevant to health. And I'll give you a little... Uh, uh, summary of that, and then we have been working hard, as I suggested this morning, on the new building, which all of you have seen has taken shape. So these are uh, the, the four uh, new faculty that have been hired with, with the Neurosciences Institute and partner departments. Uh, these are 10 billets that we will ultimately fulfill uh, by agreement with the provost. Uh, Dan Yamans is in the Department of Psychology and took up his appointment in September. Paul Nijukian in bioengineering took up his appointment in just in April, and Julia Kaltschmidt in neurosurgery about the same time. And I'm pleased to announce a successful search for uh, a new faculty member in neuroengineering, Gosong Hong, who we uh, will be making a firm offer to shortly. And he's indicated that he uh, likes the outlines of the offer. And so I think he will be joining us about a year from now in material science and engineering. He works on um, near-infrared fluorescence imaging of the brain and uh, injectable mesh electronics. So again, more tools, I think, for our community and will generate good collaborations. But we don't just care about you know, the, the faculty that we hire. There have been a number of neuroscience faculty who are new to Stanford here in the last two years. And of course, we welcome all of you and uh, want everyone to become a part of this community. This is just a list of names. I've probably missed a few. I'm not completely certain of that. But all of these people range from the Department of Philosophy to uh, Department of Neurosurgery to Biology. Um, and even to the president, the office of the president of the university, um, who we welcome to Stanford. At the postdoctoral level, we have a program that we call Interdisciplinary Scholars, and we're looking, uh, we're selecting really excellent postdocs and, and uh, funding them for two years. We have just had our third competition and announced the winners. These are three of them here. Uh, Corian Vandenacker from chemistry, Zoe Samara from psychiatry, Maria Paola Sudoli of developmental biology. And um, these two, I didn't get the label change on the slide. They've been prematurely elevated to faculty scholars as opposed to postdoctoral scholars. They'll probably be pleased to hear. Um, but this is Kyle Brewer from neurology and Hanji Lee from biology. And we had just superb uh, sets of applications this year. Uh, and, and this was a hard fought competition. And uh, we now have our, since we've been doing this three years, we have a group of alumni that, is, that are moving on into jobs beyond Stanford. And uh, we have 10 in the program. And I want to give a special thanks to Miriam Goodman, member of the XCOM, who has really taken on this postdoctoral program uh, as a personal um, uh, act of labor of love, and uh, this, there's a lot of good community here. These postdocs visit each other's labs. They work on elevator pitches. They practice their elevator pitches on the XCOM. Uh, they learn many things and get mentoring from Miriam that will stand them in good stead in the future. We had two uh, graduate fellowships that we gave out this year. These are through the goodwill of generous uh, donors to the Institute. Uh, Kevin Feigelis uh, from the physics program is in Dan Yeaman's lab, and Shulu Sun from the biology uh, graduate program is in uh, Krishna Schnoy's lab. Both of these have uh, additional mentors, so the co-mentoring is a key part of the SIGF program. So we're delighted to be making progress at all of these levels, faculty, postdocs, and graduate students. 
in research. Uh, most of you know that our signature uh, new initiative has been the Big Ideas in Neuroscience program. So this is our attempt to figure out what's really good about the interdisciplinary stimulation that we get through the, through the seed grant programs that BioEx started now maybe 12, 13 years ago, trying to take it to another scale. And we've had several teams involved in Big Ideas research. We're trying through the, again, through the, uh, in, the, through the far-sighted uh, donations of philanthropists who care about this work. Uh, we have been able to uh, select now three teams to enter phase two of our first round of Big Ideas competition. And these three teams have been operating now for about six months and they will go for a five year period. And we hope very much that these will lead to really uh, dramatic new breakthroughs in neuroscience and um, attract external funding to keep them going into the future. In addition to the Big Ideas, we have the seed grant program that we run every other year. We have just announced the six winners for this year. I can't go through these in detail, but if you look at them, you'll see that they come from a number of departments and uh, a couple of them, and for example, the first two up there are really about uh, tools development for neuroscience, but the third one, the identif identification of sex hormone interacting proteins is really curiosity discovery driven neuroscience research. Uh, and then in the other three, we have more tools, but we also have clinically relevant uh, uh, seed grants being awarded here about human cognitive aging and about chronic pain. So again, we were, we were really pleased with the quality of these applications. Uh, it was very tough to make these decisions, but we look forward to seeing the results of this research. Uh, you guys know that the new research building is going up. This is where we have also put in a lot of effort. Uh, you can see the steel rising above the ground after three and a half years. Uh, this was a picture of it um, just, uh, just a couple of, uh, about six or seven months ago, and it looks dramatically different now. The location of this site is ideal for our purposes. We are uh, directly across the street from the School of Medicine, directly across another street from the School of Engineering, and uh, with a direct link over to the basic sciences in uh, the School of uh, Humanities and Sciences as well. So we're delighted that this is underway. Uh, we had a long process, as I sort of suggested this morning, of selecting occupants for the building. The new hires will be in the building. In addition, they'll be joined by existing Stanford faculty from uh, the three major schools. And by major, I mean major in their relevance to neuroscience. Although we would hope to get some in the future uh, from uh, other schools as well. This building's gonna be a very cool place. It has a lot of interesting shared places, and these spaces we've designed so that this is a hub for the entire community. Uh, this is not just for the people whose labs are in the building, uh, but there are lots of gathering spaces. There's a beautiful courtyard in the middle. Uh, this is a, an atrium or living room that's on the second and third floors that provides for lots of informal interaction space. This will be the lobby of the uh, Stanford Neurosciences Institute. Uh, we have a pub and a cafe going into this building, uh, which was uh, heavily discussed and hard fought for, and it is, it, is, it is in the building. I think it'll be a real hub of interaction, I mean, serious interaction. We have a nice multi-purpose room that's suitable for seminars, large seminars, and for uh, other kinds of public events. It seats around 175 to 200 people. Uh, and will be accessible to anyone on campus for their events. Uh, we have formal uh, meeting rooms. We have a seminar room at about 75 capacity. And then we have these conference rooms that seat about 30, uh, 15 to 30, depending on their size. Again, that people will be able to make reservations for and use, uh, not just in the building, but outside the building as well. We have these informal meeting spaces that are uh, stuck around in strategic places, around stairwells, around uh, passageways that I think will be natural meeting places for people. And I don't know whether I mentioned it or not, but we have a pub going into the building also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
we, a key part of this building is resources for the entire community. And some of the uh, research cores that were started under the under Centen, the far-sighted leadership of Centen, will go into the building. For example, the gene virus and vector core, uh, the neuroscience microscopy core led by Andrew Olson. BFNL will continue to be sponsored by SNI, though due to space limitations, that is a large facility and can't actually go into this building. But in addition, we have a number of new facilities that we think will be uh, really valuable resources. We have what we call the neuroengineering sandbox that's under planning right now. And the rationale here is to really facilitate experimental space for uh, new collaborations between engineers and neuroscientists with staff support, uh, both on the technical side and on the animal experimentation side. And we hope that that'll act as an accelerator. It will also be a space where we can teach the Stanford Intensive Neurosciences course every um, September and probably other courses as well. There will be a core facility for human neuroscience that will make high level excellent EEG recording and TMS uh, stimulation and perhaps some other tools as well available to the community with some staff support. Uh, uh, we'll have a neuro-induced pluripotent stem cell core in the building, a small animal imaging facility that will have MRI, 7T MRI, uh, in addition to uh, PET and CT scanning. Uh, we, this is just a gleam in our eye right now. We're circling around this, but we're thinking about a lab that will emphasize aug augmented and virtual reality technology. We think there are a number of applications of these technologies in neuroscience research, but also in early um, clinical research in uh, people with sensory deficits or also with movement disorders. And we're hoping to uh, generate a very creative program around that uh, technology. We will hope to hire a person who will really be able to coordinate, seriously coordinate neuroscience computing. We're entering a new age in uh, the computing world where how we handle data, the amounts of data we have to handle, how they're curated, how they're shared is really up for grabs. Lots of models out there that are really under development. Uh, the CNI uh, in Jordan Hall has been on the cutting edge of developing some of these, and we hope to make some of this available for the entire community. There will be uh, the theory center in the new building that will have about uh, labs for six faculty in it. It'll have structural integrity on its own so that the theorists can, and computational and statistically oriented people can really uh, have uh, positive interactions. But uh, it is also intended to be a center for a wide hub of theorists and computationally interested people from around the campus. So there's a sort of a gathering place and lobby with lots of whiteboards and a little coffee bar and such. Uh, and we hope to have seminars, we hope to have informal uh, research and progress presentations that will draw in a larger community of theorists plus uh, experimentalists. So we really want this building to be a hub for the community. And I think um, it's going to take a lot of work to get there to make all of these things functioning realities. We've already tapped some of you to help us get there and we'll be tapping more in the future. Um, so we, the last thing I just wanted to touch on is that building community is also extremely important to us. We have started a new round of faculty dinners, uh, about uh, 10 faculty in each dinner. The first one was this Tuesday evening to try to uh, envision, sort of uh, do a, an evaluation of where the institute has been and is and where it should go in the future, most importantly. Uh, and it's an opportunity to give that kind of feedback and meet new colleagues. We will have, of course, our Thursday seminar series as usual, uh, 30 speakers this year. But we have two upcoming events that I hope you'll put on your calendars. We have um, a mini symposium on October 31st, that's in just a couple of weeks, that will be reports on some of the seed grants that we have already funded that have been going for a couple of years. And that should be a really interesting event to see uh, how that science has gone. And then we're going to have the first S uh, Stanford Neurosciences Institute retreat at Pajaro Dunes. And if any of you have your calendars on your personal devices, 
Uh, mark this date down, May 6th through 8th. We'll be sending out further notices about that. But uh, we're, we have a committee at work planning this, and this is not a trivial thing to try to imagine a retreat that will attract and be interesting to engineers and clinicians and basic neuroscientists and uh, geneticists, molecular biologists, electrophysiologists. We will certainly feature talks from new uh, Stanford neuroscience faculty. We will have some technology demonstrations. We'll have some panel discussions, and we'll have a keynote talk. Our keynote guest speaker is actually Eddie Chang from UCSF, who kind of combines a lot of these interests in his research on human speech and audition and uh, recordings actually from the living human brain. So that's your sort of quick uh, update. Uh, I should also say that uh, we will have a new round of competition for big ideas in spring that will be announced soon. So uh, be thinking about, uh, you know, where you think we could put our, our shoulders to the wheel really uh, together and collectively with teams of investigators. And we'll be having a call for proposal, proposals for the next round of big ideas in spring.